A very good evening and welcome to the Papare Basketball Championship Finals between St. Joseph's and Holy Family Convent. St. Joseph's in the red and Holy Family in the blue. Our sincere apologies for the delayed start in the broadcast, but the move from Royal College Outdoor Courts to the Air Force Indoor Courts has caused a few technical issues, but uh, no such issues for St. Joseph's who has stormed into a lead in uh, this match with St. Joseph's playing really hard to try and catch up to uh, the favourites. And uh, these two teams, easily the best two teams in the competition, uh, passing the Silva joining me in the commentary box. They have thrashed all comers and uh, clearly the best two teams, but it looks very much in the first uh, half that uh, St. Joseph's are going to pull away with this one, passing to. Yes, Shanaga, definitely. And uh, with these two, te the same teams becoming the joint champs last year as well, both teams do have a point to prove. But um, as we saw uh, yesterday evening, you know, you can't really write off a team uh, just by a half's um, score. So we'll have to see how HFC uh, bounces back and uh, as they try to shave off this point deficit, we'll see how it goes. Yes, uh, we'll certainly have to do that. Uh, the pictures, of course, a little bit compromised by the angles available to us here at the uh, Royal Co the uh, Air Force uh, indoor courts. Uh, it's not the biggest space, so that means we have to come at you from a fairly acute angle in terms of where the cameras are positioned. So uh, forgive us for uh, if parts of the court are a little bit cut off at some points on the um, on the broadcast. But you're watching the finals of the Papare.com Basketball Championships. St. Joseph's making all the early inroads. St. Joseph's need to make a little bit of a tactical change at the moment with about six minutes left, just over six minutes left in the second quarter. And they need to make a tactical change, slow the game down a little bit because St. Joseph's have been absolutely running riot with a very fast-paced game and the penetration of uh, some excellent players, Rasmi Tanya and HK Thesari in particular. Amali Anande in the number six jersey running the play for them. There appears to be a 24-second violation and the ball is turned over. HFC really needs to crack this man-to-man -man defense done by uh, St. Joseph's. They've been really struggling with it. As you see there, number five, and Fernando. Back to Sandrine. Sandrine David has been off the mark with a couple of her layups. The HFC captain will need to step up in the second half. Yeah, especially a national team experience will come in handy, especially at a time like this. Here's Tissari. Opts to take on her defender and finishes beautifully and gets uh, another option as well to go for the uh, three-point play. She has been really outstanding in this first half for St. Joseph's. Uh, passing the really penetrating well. Yeah, definitely. She's very confident. Yeah, her finishing has also been pinpoint. And she's been really good um, along with uh, Tarindya Ilanga Tilaka as well. Uh, on the other hand, uh, Nirangi, uh, Nihari Umanga, their captain, has had a quiet game. But um, that little uh, hiccup has been papered over by the performances of Tarindya Ilanga Tilaka and HK Tisari. Nihari Manga suffering a little bit of an injury. I think she got a blow to her ribs. She was on the bench for a few moments and she's now entered into the game. Nice ball movement from uh, St. Joseph's again. The three second violation there, or a 24 second violation again. HSE has been able to get these stops going, but on the other end of the court, they've been really struggling to put the ball in the basket. So if they can figure that out, uh, through some quality ball movement, I would say they would be in good hands. Yes, and this uh, girl needs to be at the forefront of that. Great shot from uh, Shanali Dharmasena on that occasion. Number 16, free in the corner, got a good look. And they maybe need to go for a few more outside shots just to force that St. Joseph's defense not to collapse into the key. Definitely. Amali Ananda goes to the corner looking for her captain. Nihari with a nice drive to the basket, can't get it in off the glass. And here's Tissari looking for Rashmi Tanya. But again, a good, uh, good bit of defence, forcing some bad shots there. But the thing is, uh, Shanaga, HFC have been giving St. Joseph's a lot of second chance points, offensive rebounds and that sort. So they really have to uh, work on their defensive rebounds because that's, may that's mainly a reason why St. Joseph's are this much ahead at this point of the game. They really need their centers to pick up, don't they? Pass they need Gayathi Jasinger in the number seven jersey. That's her on your screen right now. She needs to be more of a defensive presence 
in that box for HFC. Yes, definitely. Along with uh, Hassini De Silva, both of them really has to step up, uh, especially in the offensive end as well, because uh, they have missed some uh, pretty easy shots as well. Yes, they need to get out of the basket and use their muscle to uh, really take good shots against this much smaller St. Joseph's defense. Not a huge height advantage, but in terms of size, they're really surrendering a lot of kilos. So I think they need to use that back in on the low post and try and get some good shots off. That's better from uh, HFC, but uh, good hustle there from uh, Nihari Umanga, leading from the front, the skipper. But uh, no jump ball, it's a holy family ball. Onila Dunivila on the court at the moment, and Sandrine David drives to the basket. And those are the shots that HFC need to be making. FDP Shanaka. They just need to make this work. Good step back. In and out. That's just hard luck. That was a really good shot they took. So three opportunities on that offense, but uh, not able to sink a single one. And that's been the problem for HFC so far. Good jump shot finish from uh, HK Thesari. Uh, she's been on fire. And, um, it's... HSC has be, been making a lot of mistakes on the on the offensive side and St. Joseph's Nugegoda has really been making them pay. They certainly have. That's a good uh, ball in, but again, Serena David not opting to drive to the basket. So she's not playing with a lot of confidence today, unfortunately. She's missed a few shots and some of her passes have been stolen. So I think she's uh, taking a step back and the, the HFC team are looking to her passing though. And just like we saw in the Gateway College versus AIS uh, third place playoff yesterday, when your big players step up, guys like Chenuka stepped up yesterday and suddenly the home team follows. So uh, for HFC to come back into this game, they really need their captain to uh, step up. Yes, Shanaka, she just needs to take a deep breath and just calm herself down because if she panics, the whole team panics. And especially with the national team experience going for her, she just needs to draw, draw from that experience and just calm his players down. And how much do you think HFC and in fact the other teams also will be affected by the fact that this tournament has suddenly been moved indoors? Obviously the ball is different that you use, so your shooting action, your release, everything changes ever so slightly. Both teams, all the teams actually would practice indoor and outdoor, but to make that switch, how difficult is that passing though? It's always difficult. Um, especially under 19 school level because even for an elite athlete this switch is going to be rather tricky so we'll see how the players adjust but in my point of view St. Joseph's Girls College doesn't seem to be affected at all but HFC does seem to be affected a little especially their shooting uh, from the perimeter. Yes we'll see how uh, we, they adapt to that as the game goes on it's only going to get better for St. Joseph's and HFC as they get more and more used to this backboard, more and more used to the surrounds of this court. When you've played an entire tournament on one court and have to shift suddenly, it's never easy. And uh, the five having a little bit of a huddle there. Sandrine giving uh, her instructions. She's been good around the court. She's shown a lot of hustle, but needs to show just a little bit more composure in those top two inches. Maybe this is where the game changes for HFC, Sandrine drives to the basket and gets the foul. Doesn't get the drop though. It's, it's here she, where she needs to make a slight adjustment. I, I, in my point of view, I think she's a bit too hurried. She, what she could do is just set the ball because as we can see, most of her players are just running up the court when she's dri uh, dribbling past them and trying to make the basket on her own. So slow the game down is Pasidu's advice. I would agree completely. Especially with the, uh, the two big girls having uh, the option of playing the post. They really need to get the ball to them and have the others move off. Onela Dunivila again with that really uh, quick offense. This is better from uh, St. Joseph's setting the play. Screen for the skipper from Hassani De Silva. Here's the shooter looking for an option, but well guarded by Parindya Ilanka Tilaka. 24 second violation there, so we've got to find the balance between slowing down and getting a good shot off. 
Definitely. And now uh, HFC seems to be uh, employing a bit of a... Uh, in the previous play, they were employing a bit of a man-to-man -man defense, which did not work at all because of the two big girls. We saw how uh, Tharinda just ran past the number seven of uh, HFC. So they need to get their tactics right and a timeout for uh, St. Joseph's College. Two minutes left in the half and uh, 13 seconds on the shot clock as well for St. Joseph's. But this is where they've really suffered because on the first step, this uh, St. Joseph's team looks very penetrative, uh, passing through especially Amelia Ananda and uh, HK Tissori, they can beat their markers off that first step, which means there's nobody to really follow up, defend uh, for HFC. So perhaps moving to that zone that they uh, tried earlier, maybe a 2-1-2 zone even, where they have a big centre in the middle, try and preventing that uh, drive. Perhaps that's the option that they need to take, but tactically, St. Joseph's have been on point so far. Definitely, their, their pace especially. Uh, I think the St. Joseph's girls' school, uh, Nugegoda coach, has got it spot on with HFC fielding the two big sen uh, centers and the power forward. So playing the speed game rather than the power game uh, has really worked out. And uh, you can see St. Joseph's has a commanding lead of 31 to 18. HFC really need to get this right and come out strong and finish this quarter strong. Well, as you said yesterday, Pasandu, it's only five baskets in it. So you get the defensive stops and just so some Composure at the other end. This is almost exactly where Gateway College found themselves yesterday against AIS. Definitely. So there's always hope. Definitely. But they really do tactically have to adjust St. Jo uh, HFC. St. Joseph's just need a little bit more of the same. So a little bit more calmness on their bench. And they get the roll that time. Better movement from St. Joseph's that time. The shot goes up. And again, those rebounds not controlled. You need Gayati Jasinga to really be dominant on those boards on the defensive and offensive end. Serena Vandakula has come back into the game. That's a good drive and finish from uh, Shanali Dharmasena. And this is what they need to do. They took their time, they set their offense. And now they got their reward. They need to get these stops now. Once again, the smallest play on the court getting that offensive rebound. Yes, that's the stuff that you call a coach killer, isn't it, uh, Pasindu? Because yeah. you can't expect the smallest offensive player to be picking up those rebounds when you've got such a big size advantage. Got to box out and that's what they're really not doing. This is much better from HFC, setting their offense first. Nice turn. And Tarin Dailanka Tilaka conceding the foul. Both teams not in foul trouble so far. Shanaka, don't you think um, the St. Joseph's players might be rather tiring out? Because they have been playing at the same pace um, all quarter long. Well, I would, long. I would agree with you, Pasindu, except for the fact that HFC has tried to keep up with them. So they would be tired as well. And given the size advantage that HFC has, maybe their team might be even more tired out. So we'll have to see how the second half goes. Conditioning will be a huge factor. Conditioning really does come into play, especially when you are playing in an indoor arena. We'll see how it goes. Well, the lead has been cut to 11 now. Nice drive from Tissori. Can't get it to roll. And here's Onela Dunavila. Looks for her skipper. Shanali Dharmasena screaming for the ball. They really need to uh, spot those players because Shanali, from her looks, um, seems to be the sharpshoot of the team. She was wide open, but um, Serena Varnakula just couldn't spot her. And now two successive players that St. Joseph's have fouled on. So that might be that tiredness coming in just before the halftime break. Shanali body checked there. Looked a lot worse than it was, I think. Seems to be. Shanali may be trying to draw a yellow card, but no yellow cards here in uh, 
basketball. Yeah. She'll have to be a tough girl and just brush it off and get on with it because the team needs, needs her right now. Nice pass under the basket. But again, really no use of that physicality. Good hustle there by um, Sandrine David. Uh, coming back in defense and just swatting the ball out of play so her defensive players can get set. Once again, Gayathi Jayasinghe needed some of those. Um, she needs to work on her footwork because that is not really good um, basket awareness from her as St. Joseph's College uh, Girls School scores once more. David bringing it up. Dalmasena looks for Dunuila. Dalmasena steps back and shoots. And no basket, and it's half time here at the Papre Basketball Championships Girls Final. The two best teams in the competition easily. Joint champs last year with a score to settle here. And uh, with just uh, a double digit lead, a barely double digit lead for St. Joseph's, we have uh, a half time break when both coaches will settle their teams down and see what they need to adjust tactically, how their team's feeling conditioning wise, and where do they go from here in this second half. The Papri Basketball Championship conducted at the Royal Outdoor Courts but moved indoors because of today's inclement weather conditions. We apologize for the earlier delay in the broadcast beginning a little bit late but we had to shift all the equipment that had been set up at Royal College back uh, to Air Force Courts here. The boys final in just over an hour's time. Or just under an hour's time I should say. At the uh, Air Force Courts also. Here are the highlights of the first half. Nice driving from HK Thissari. And Shanali Dharmasena, they'll need a few more of those, Pasindu. Yes, definitely. And um, uh, But Shanaga, what I think I see is a bit of tiring out from the St. Joseph's players, ultimately because they've been playing all half long. But um, the big, uh, big players, um, Sandrine David, and uh, especially um, number seven, Gayati Jaya Singha, they will need to put their hands up, use that size of theirs, and really get those buckets for HFC, otherwise this is a done deal. They need their experience, they need Anne Fernando also to step up, and maybe a little bit more shooting from Serena Varnakula, who hasn't been part of the team for the entire half, but what you did mention is the fact that uh, St. Joseph seemed to be revolving around the same five players, with maybe just one sixth sub. So how they will last the course of this game will uh, probably dictate that fourth quarter. Whereas HFC seem to have a little bit more depth available to them off the bench. But they really do need to get their offense sorted out. Once again, Shanaga, the crowd support has been immense for both teams. As I think our viewers can hear all the cheers going on. We can barely hear each other as well. It's been that intense. But HFC really needs to do their crowd justice. They need to come back and make this a worthy final. Absolutely. And we saw yesterday that it can be done. We've seen comebacks in uh, the semi-finals as well. St. Thomas is trailing to Gateway by a long way. And came back to win that game. Gateway also trailing by double digits yesterday, came back to win that game. So, St. Joseph's will not be resting on their laurels. And HFC fans, if you're watching around the world, should not worry too much that the game is done and dusted. There's plenty of time for this uh, team to come back. Cricket, football, golf. 
Tennis, wrestling atulu, jawab utwe kie kategori kreda wan rasak, das kam vis kam pinta kanda. Obe dialog televisyen in Sony Tin One channel ya activate keraganda. Activate keragani mete My Dialog app peke bawa tak keranda. Net now, Oin histanak Dialog TV ginu mangke histanak head ata type ker Dialog jang mudur katane ki nam high si head tena betoh, wenak jang mudur katane jale ki nam binguai hat si head tawai high si head tena betoh high si head tena betoh SMS keranda. Dialog Television, Sri Lanka we angke ke Television Rasa Swadaya. आखिर में तो सहमति हुए तय के लिए मानदान का तय दा, बटा तो उन्हीं टीटे नाम तक होना। एस मागे एस एक स्ट्रेट लाइन के कटे आओ ने सैम एक्शन ने के कटे में इक्वल वोट प्रतिविरुद्ध वोट रिएक्शन ने का ऐतक किया ना न्यूटन के तहत लोग लैब पे कहीं निलिए दी लो के तो वो पुकार में या एकाकारी प्रवेगी की नेवित मागे लगे दी मंद गामी होने मागे हाथवते लिफ्ट वेंट्री कले के पातूले ना आप वेव का आड़ संधा कपाट कपागे ना ब्लड वेसल्स पुरा में आवे मिल मागे मैग्नेटिक फील्ड के बारे अट्रैक्ट होने प्रतिविरुद्ध आरोपी तो मैग्नेटिक का कोगे या मागे लगे इनमें वारी वेदी हाथ का लपड़ा 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 क एक आने के लिए जस्ट वाला तहन वाली केला बाला ना, हाय लोग तो कांच ना, कांच ना, अबे रिएक्शन स्पीड देख बैठ कराना आप उत्प्रेरित क्या कोगे, मावटे का क्या हटो तल्लू कला, मंग हरी तो मुफ़ 45 डिग्रीज़ ओल्ड वाला कर रहा, याद है शायनी बाला दिता माय याय माय प्रतिक्रिया करना सो देखे वातुरों के दावों सोडियम के हल्ला वाके तुम दागे ना सब मागे पत्ते अंगिला दिख रहा थे यहाँ सप्लाई कर वे कवाके लाइट स्पीड देखे आते ही सुआ ये देख कम सल्फर डाइऑक्साइड एमोनिया मीथेन गैस वो लेटर क्रेडिट टू ना वाके माव मावटा ब्रह्मनी वेमिन डिस्क के कवाटे परी ब्रह्मनी वेमिन डेमो बैठूना जस्ट लाइक � मचांग दाढ़ी गंदाई केला केलो किया ने ने ये तत्त्र में दाढ़ी दम मम गंदाई इन्हीं सा केला कंगी तले नागा ने नेतु ना आपु का मंग रेक्सो ना डियो आते टका गन From Commercial Bank. My life, my style. Dot com. I'm in control. I'm in control. Richard Dunrapal and he does brilliantly moving into the corner there. Outstanding individual. This is brilliant by Danush Karanjan. Scoring his seventh. Trying to time with one hand and looks like he's through. The outside fence off one. Great news for all you movie lovers. Now all Dialogue Television View Hub customers will receive exclusive access to the Cinema World Movie Library. Watch international award-winning movies on demand for absolutely free till the 15th of August. Press the View button on your remote control to access Cinema World and Video On Demand. Visit www.dialogue.lk slash TV for more information. Dialogue Television, Sri Lanka's number one television experience. I'm in control. I'm in control. I'm in control. Keeping up with fun that grows. Tagging our friends for more and more. In control of my life. With the God that gives me on the go. In the rhythm that sets my goal. Gets me grooving in control. Yeah. I'm in control. I'm in control. Teen account from Commercial Bank. My life, my style. Dot com. I'm in control. I'm in control.
डाउनलोड करन ऑस्ट्रेलिया में आई एलावे ले गेदर डेटा हुंदट हम यूज करला इवरो नो टग गाला डेटा ऐड ऑन कर गमु इति मगे पैकेज के डेटा ऐड ऑन करन पुलवन ने टग गाला ने इकाक विलायाई अंकल दानो दे गोडक काय टग गाल मेहम न हयालन पुलवन किर दानने आ दानने ने ने एकाई टिकाक वटेन यान आगतने ये वाके वटेन यान ने तो टग गाला माय डायलॉग ऐप के डेटा ऐड ऑन कर गन्ना डायलॉग होम ब्रॉडबैंड विथिन अडुमा अडु गाने टा ऐड ऑन पैकेज I'm in control I'm in control I'm in control Keeping up with fun that grows Tagging our friends for more and more I'm in control of my life Is the god that gets me on the go In the rhythm that sets my goals Gets me grooving in control Yeah I'm in control I'm in control Dotcom team account from Commercial Bank My life my style Dotcom I'm in control Very good evening and welcome back to the Papare Basketball Championships Girls Finals. St. Joseph's Nuge Goda versus uh, Holy Family Convent Bumble Pitiya. St. Joseph's there in the red. Going out into an early lead in this game and leading comfortably at half time. How comfortable that lead would be will be dictated by how Saint, uh, how Holy Family respond in the second half. Joining me in the commentary box, uh, passing the silver. It's been an entertaining half from uh, Saint Joseph's, but how Holy Family react will be key to how entertaining this match is going into the fourth quarter. Yeah, definitely, but. Um, I have a feeling that HFC will come out with all guns blazing, and especially given the fact that St. Joseph's have uh, stuck with their starting five for the second half as well. So we'll see the conditioning of the players will really come into the into the party uh, today. Here's the captain, the top of the D, Nihari Umanga. Take a long shot first up, but once again the attacking rebound falls for. Sun Joseph's Umanga, the captain, can't finish there. And here's the opposite captain, Serena David, flying up the floor. And she needs to do a little less flying, perhaps, in this second half. Control things a little bit and not advance the ball before her teammates get there. Yeah, definitely, because um, given the uh, performance of, the, of both teams in the group stages, they practically coasted their, themselves to the finals. But this is the finals. So I don't think the team will give any leeway at all. So we'll have to see how uh, Sandrine David uh, marshals her troops. And that was what concerned me at the outset, passing through because both teams completely not tested. They're winning their games by 30 and 40 points. So this really is the first test that they've had in this entire tournament, and uh, that is beginning to show for HFC. Ilanga Tilaka drives to the basket but can't get past the outstretched arm of uh, Gayati Jayasinghe. Jayasinghe will need to step up a little bit more. Yeah, but again, the mismatch uh, between um, Ilanga Tilaka and um, Gayati Jayasinghe are evident there because um, Tharinda Ilanga Tilaka clearly, clearly beat him, uh, beat uh, Gayati Jayasinghe for pace and thus drawing that foul. That's better from Serena. Rather from uh, Varnakula. Shanali Dharmasena gets the shot off. They need to get this rebound and a second chance. But again, Gayati Jayasinghe gets to the ball but is stripped of it. Needs to be much stronger on the ball. Use her elbows to protect it. Here's Amali Anandan. Ops out of the drive to the basket. This time she's got nobody in front of him and the pull-up jumper is no good. Nihar Rumanga with that offensive rebound. And once again, the complacency of the centre of uh, HFC really hurting them. But nonetheless, they have the ball now. And Sandrine David is advancing the ball up court. David to Jasinghe. Here's Varnakula. 
Nice drive from uh, Warnakula, but uh, the left hand layup is not good. And here's Nihari Umanga taking it all the way to the hole and drawing the foul. Fairly comfortable on her left hand, Nihari Umanga, the captain for St. Joseph's. Here she is again. Takes it baseline, finished with the right hand. And that's a good basket, Pasindu. Definitely. And it was some easy stuff as well. HFC just parting like the Red Sea. And um, St. Joseph's captain, Nihari Umanga, with the easy basket there. Whereas we a counterpart in HFC has ha been having a rather tough day at the office, Shanaka. Absolutely. Really good defense again from Rashmi Tanya on the HFC captain. And HK Tisari gets the bucket as well and the foul. She really has been outstanding. And as you were pointing out, Pasindu, number seven and number eight for HFC. They've been beaten on the dribble, beaten on the first step, and beaten at the boards as well. And uh, that's where the game has gone away from HFC. Yeah, definitely. Again, Captain Nihari Umanga leading from the front, getting that offensive board. As Sandrine David advances the ball. Again, the Hassani De Silva shot, no good. And Amali Ananda will settle things down. For Tarindya Ilanga Tilaka. Takes her permitted three steps, but uh, can't get it to go. And here's uh, Shonela Dharmasena, Shonali Dharmasena, rather. The ball is stripped. St. Joseph's has been doing that really well, chasing down that player and stripping that ball. It's a strip from behind. That's uh, never fun when you're a player. Ilanga Tilaka's shot comes up just short and Barnakula will look for her skipper. And there's uh, the ball in at the post. This is what HFC need. And that's a better shot. And you saw what uh, Hassani De Silva did there. She drew three defenders to herself and allowed Serena to get an easy pull-up jumper. Yeah, definitely. That's, um, that's what HFC has to do from now on. Just Keep it simple, do the basic things right, nothing fancy. And a nice pass, very nice pass by the captain to uh, Amanda Amali. Lovely uh, backdoor cut from Amali. Gayati looks for Dharmasena. Dharmasena. Back to her skipper. Five seconds on the shot clock. And the shot won't count because uh, the shot clock had elapsed. That's some really good defense by the St. Joseph's girls. It's been really good defending from, from them throughout the game. Giving nothing away. So shown a lot more desire, haven't they, Pasindu, in this uh, entire match. Definitely Shanaka. Nihari Umanga drives to the basket. And that time can't uh, get it to finish. David takes the uh, high screen. And again, the ball stripped away from uh, Gayati, jazzing her. She needs to be stronger. She needs to hold the ball up, not get stripped by these shorter players. HK Tisari with the drive and a nice pass into her captain. That was almost a no-look pass by HK Tisari um, to Tashina Ureshani, who's, who has checked in for Tarinda Ilanga Tilaka. Tarinda Ilanga Tilaka, one of the key players for St. Joseph's Nuge Goda. St. Joseph has shown that they're happy for Jayasinghe to control the ball. And uh, Serena with her first three-pointer. Need a few more of those uh, to catch up to St. Joseph's today. 
16 um, points the difference. They need some of the momentum to go their way. They need to build some momentum if they are to wipe this deficit off. That's better from uh, HFC, but have to control the rebounds. The boxing out has been poor, passing to say the least. Definitely. HFC ringing in some changes, change of personnel. And Fernando coming in, as did uh, Onela Dunuvila. So they'll probably play a faster paced game now. Definitely. Fisher is in and out, didn't have the trajectory. And Serena takes it up, takes her three steps but can't get it to go. Here's Nihari. Left hand layup is no good, but again, St. Joseph's come up with the offensive rebound. Any sort of offensive momentum HFC has gotten has been dampened by their defense. So they really need to get that defensive stops going. And a line cut turns the ball over to HFC again. Now, um, captain and point girl Sandrine David. Now she has some smaller players, some quick players with speed. We'll see, we'll see how HFC operates now. That's a nice roll. Varnakula, Serena Varnakula using that high screen set by Anne Fernando. Very good screen as well. So let's see whether this personnel change works for HFC. St. Joseph still sticking to their tried and tested formula. And again, the offensive rebound. Finally grabbed by Anne Fernando. Serena taking her three steps, but again, can't bank it in off the glass. Mihari Umanga keeping the pace going, as will Amali. Tissari now, asking for a screen. Nihari goes byline, Fernando is easily beaten. That was an obvious foul, but Onela, I don't think she had a choice because she was seriously mismatched, outmatched size-wise. So, in my opinion, that was a good foul. Well, you can see that uh, Nihari Manga's body language means that she is tiring. There's two minutes to go here and an entire sec fourth quarter. But I think as the senior most player and the captain, she knows what her job description is and she will kick on. Varnakula takes it to the hole herself. Can't get the three-point play but will get the two shots. The stark difference between um, St. Joseph's Nugegod and HFC has been their ball movement. You could, you could see in the uh, previous passage of play that Shonali was clearly available under the ring, but um, Serena Varnakul uh, uh, opted to go alone. Whereas St. Joseph's Nugegoda might have probably passed that ball and got that bucket. Yes, the awareness of uh, three players under the basket, that's been a key difference for St. Joseph's. They've driven well and there's always been a support player. Amali. Slowing the pace a little bit. Tissari opts to drive, finds Amali on the key. And again, that's sloppy from Varnakula. She had the rebound and gave the possession away. It's a good finish under the basket from the smallest player on both teams. She really has been like a pocket dynamo today, getting those rebounds, getting those assists going as well. As Ser Sandrine David sinks another three, we'll see if she gets that rhythm going and we'll see if HFC can get some momentum going for them as well. They need this defensive stop now. Fisari looking for Tasina under the basket. And again, St. Joseph's really converging on that uh, offensive board. Right. 
backcourt says uh, the referee so HFC will get the turnover that's better defense from them yeah, much better defense much better hustle uh, hustle as well so let's see how this combination of Fernando and David works because and Fernando set some nice screens for the two three-point shots that uh, Sandri and David hit so they might need to go to that a bit more often but they have the foul now I think the absence of the big uh, center and the big power forward at the low post has really uh, thrown St. Joseph's off the game because the, their low post is really being exposed and another foul being committed by them. Mihara Umanga advancing it up the sideline. Takes the open shot and it falls for Shonali Dharmasena. But again, the strip coming from uh, Amali, who chases back really well. And Nihari Umanga will now come up the same right hand byline. Much better ball movement from St. Joseph's. Playing a very European style of basketball. Uh, passing to no one player holds the ball for too long on this St. Joseph's lineup. Yes, the ball al almost touches all five players before it is being shot, it has been released. Really good. The main thing going for them is those offensive boards they've been getting as well, which give the, gives the players. Good it's awareness good. from uh, Sandrine David as the shot clock and the game clock winds down on the third quarter. And it's a 12-point game. So this is where they started the half. So they haven't conceded too much. And that half has been even Stevens. If David can get those three-point shots going. And uh, they've now seen what works for them, HFC. And perhaps their coach will have more of a word with them about what that is. But St. Joseph's will still keep playing at 100 miles per hour and hope that they can see out the rest of this uh, quarter. And it looks very much like they're the favorites at the moment. It's all for HFC to do to try and claw this one back. You're watching the Papare Basketball Championship live from the Air Force indoor coach, shifted from the Royal College outdoor coach as we look at the uh, captain of uh, St. Joseph's, banking that one home off the glass. And uh, the other captain, Sandrine David, with a lovely pull-up jumper. And those were the highlights of that third quarter. It's been uh, an entertaining game of uh, basketball, especially in that third quarter with uh, HFC coming back a little bit into the game. But they really need to make sure that uh, they do some defensive work. It's 33 points to 45, 12-point game as we'll come back and join you on the Papare for the fourth quarter. Yeah, it's 33-45 and both coaches having a stern word, not exactly a stern word, but a word all the same to both teams. It's all to play for at the Papare Basketball Championships 2018 Girls Finals, played between St. Joseph's College uh, School, Girls School Nogegode and the Holy Family Convent. Holy Family in the blue, St. Joseph's in the red. And it's familiar territory for them. Both teams joined champs last year. The inclement weather has forced us indoors today. And Sandrine David will hope that uh, it's a last gasp effort from her team. And Fernando offering the screen to her skipper. And Onela Dunivilla's shot is blocked beautifully by the opposing skipper. Nihari Umanga has uh, really led the hustle from this Josephian team. Definitely. Um, she hasn't got that much baskets by herself, but on the defensive end and from her body language, she has been pushing on. 
HK Tissari. Here's Amanda. Great ball movement and again hustling for the rebound. No easy balls for HFC today as Onela Dunavila dribbles herself free for Shanali Dharmasen and she sinks the three. That's her second three pointer today, Shanali's. And you can hear the crowd go absolutely wild. Here we go. You can sense a slight change in momentum, a slight shift in momentum as well. And well, that one will bring it right back. That was HK Tissari showing that she can do both uh, skills on the offensive end. Both teams going back and forth. This is what's been happening throughout the match. Whenever HFC has been getting something going on the offensive floor, St. Joseph's has answered right back in the opposite uh, position. This time a foul will be on Tharinda Ilangatilaga. Ilangatilaga has been on and off the bench, but she's been good today. She and uh, HK Tissari have been leading the offense. Dharmasena, that time she's a little off. Yes, Tissari now. With the crossover, beautiful crossover as well. And gets it to grow. Magnificent finish by HK Tissari there. Sandrine David to Serena Varnakula with the step back. Does not go in and Amanda, Amali Amanda with I think her third offensive rebound. Sorry, uh, third rebound. And again, an offensive board for St. Joseph. This is where they have dominated the game. Getting the turnover as well. This is the girl who needs to step up for HFC. Anne Fernando's got a lot of experience, but she may be carrying a little bit of an injury. She hasn't had a lot of game time today, Pasindu. Yeah, and she, they need her on the floor. Yeah, she, do, she did not start as well. Maybe something is really uh, going on, but nonetheless, HFC really needs her to step up as well. Other than that, Serena Varnakula, Gadi Jaising has had a quiet game and she's been on the bench. She might, she may be utilized later, later on in the game. But right now, Serena Varnakula and Sandrine David, the two most experienced girls for HFC, really needs to get something going for their team. They tried the size tactic, didn't they? HFC it didn't quite work for them because the pace mismatch that St. Joseph's had was just too much. HK Tisari, Amali Amanda. And Tharinga Ilanga Tilaka really easily beat the markers off the dribble. So that tactic didn't work and HFC have responded but maybe a little too late. Yeah. Almost eight minutes to go now in the final quarter. 50 to 36, St. Joseph's school, girls school Nugegoda leading. We'll have to see it's never over until the final whistle blow, uh, blows. We'll have to see how it goes. HFC really needs to get themselves together now. 15 points was the biggest lead of the night so far. It's less than that at the moment. Amali being the linchpin in that ball movement so far. Gets a good shot off, but again stripped. So really no offensive momentum for HFC. It was an open shot, it had to be taken. And Umanga takes it up that right hand line like she has been all game. Fisheri spots a mismatch and gets the basket. Her finishing has been absolutely beautiful throughout the day and shows just how good she is with that little step inside and then the finish. 
That's Hassani De Silva. They need more from her. Needs to muscle her way to the basket, but it hasn't happened all game. That's a better rebound from uh, Hassani. Onela Dunavilla rescues that one. David with the drive, she gets the bucket as well and a chance of a three-point play for Sandrine David. Just under six and a half minutes left on the clock. It's a huge task to make up these 16 points, Basindu. But uh, you've got to start somewhere. Yeah, it's never impossible. Um, especially if Sandrine does make this, uh, make this bucket, that'll be a 13-point uh, game. HK Tisari drawing that foul. She's been a fantastic for St. Joseph's Girls School, Nugegoda. She'll be going to the line again. Yes, she's certainly in line for the best player in this game so far. But it has been a solid team effort from St. Joseph's. Each one performing their roles pretty well. Yes, Shanaga, definitely. Um, I would like to put the emphasis on role playing because player, their play, players have been doing exactly what they were supposed to do at the exact time they were supposed to do that. Tashina Ureshani doing a good job on Anne Fernando there at the top of the key because Fernando is looking to set that uh, high screen for David. She scored two three pointers off those, but Ureshani is really getting in her way and preventing her from setting that screen. That's good off the ball stuff from uh, St. Joseph's, good awareness. Yeah, Serena Varnakula takes the first of her two free throws. HFC really will need to take this offensive rebound as well. And they do. And once again, giving it away cheaply. Yureshani with uh, good defensive work that time. Amali Aranda calling for the screen. And that's a nice roll to the basket from Tashina. They've gone back to the two big players. HFC but uh, can't make it count. Once again, once again, Sandy Lee. The out of bounds and HFC ball. Once again, Sandrine David going on her own, getting isolated and getting the ball stripped away from her in the previous play. She'll need to set, set it up now, be patient. Once again, you can see the HFC players with not much hustle, no real intensity, no one went after that ball. So, it is a bit evident that they might have given up on this match. Yes, it seems so. Going through the motions, as it were. Shanali Dharmasena scored a couple of three-pointers. They'll need a few more. Serena Varnukula's drive is badly timed. Darmasena drives and scores. So timeout taken by uh, St. Joseph's there. Probably just to instill into their players that it's not over yet. Definitely with four, mini uh, four, four minutes, 42 seconds to go. It's really not over. Four minutes is a really long time in basketball. Especially since we are playing stop clock as well. The players really do have a lot of time to set and play. As we can see in the HFC bench, Sandrine, David, the captain saying just calm down. But they, I think, in my point of view, they need to get um, Shonali Dharmasena open a bit more. Get her more looks from beyond the three-point line as well because 14.7 baskets. 
they will really, really need to push themselves in these four, sec uh, four minutes remaining. Yes, they have to rotate so that David and Dharmasena get good looks passing through, and uh, that's something that they haven't been able to do all game. And with the two big players, they need to run that screen, not for the ball the handler himself or herself, but for the other players to get open. On the other hand, uh, Amali Amanda has been doing a really, really good job of St. Joseph's Girls School, Nuge Goda. She's been really calm at top of the key, setting the place and just eating away at that game clock, just running the time down. So St. Joseph's making sure they get their players a good rest in their huddle. The body language from the HFC coach suggests that uh, maybe he feels that this might be a hurdle too far. Uh, from the intensities from both teams, it's pretty evident that St. Joseph's Girls School okay, got, uh, seems to be wanting this a bit more than HFC. But HFC is not out of it yet. It's never over until it's over. We'll have to see Shanaga, but. As of now, St. Joseph seems to be having this in the bag. You're watching the Papare.com, Sri Lanka's number one sports hub. And our very own basketball tournament, the Papare Basketball Championships, coming to you live wherever you are in the world. The weather's been too bad for you to get out of the house. Well, we are bringing it straight into your living room, onto your laptop screens or smart TVs or whatever you may be watching this on. It has been a superb performance so far from St. Joseph's. And HFC, can they go out with a bang? Simple mistake, but they are from uh, HK Tisari turning the ball over. Line cut. Uh, Sandrine David advances the ball up the court. That's a better ball for Gayati Jasinga, but again, on the high post, a little bit too far away from the basket. Yeah, she needs to be a bit more down, more towards the basket because I don't think she has the dribbling skills required to get that power dribble going and advance to the basket herself. Is post play dead, Pasindu? Has Stephen Curry killed it? Seems to be so. The trend going is sharp shooting and not much post play. We'll have to see, but the trend right now is everyone's going to be shooting three points for a long time. Well, it's a shame because the HFC just don't seem to be able to use these two assets that they have in Hassani and uh, Gayati. And as I say that, Hassani puts one home. But maybe it's not that dead, but we have to see. Lead cut to 12 points now. Amelie takes that back up to 14. She's been good today. The little dynamo. Especially in getting back and stripping some HFC fast breaks. Yeah, definitely. She's been, she's been having a rather high work rate today. As the ball is turned over once more. Again, the much smaller player there was Maleka Imshara, who's just gone in, managing to hustle with uh, Hassani. Here's Amali, running the clock down. She knows that's all she has to do now. Tisari, in and out. And I can see the foul as well. HK Tisari has been ha having a rather off fourth quarter, but overall her game has been wonderful today. I think she feels she's done her job, Pasindu. Yeah, she I think so. She might be pretty tired. Yeah, she's, she has been playing almost every minute of the game. As Sandri David gets another bucket. Lovely finish from David, but you can see that the Defensive intensity has fallen off a little bit from St. Joseph's. 
Here's where HFC can capitalize as well. It's a 12 point game. So the a little bit of complacency is like uh, creeping into the game of uh, St. Joseph's. Fisheri is a lovely turnaround shot, but it's off the mark. Here she is again, drawing the foul from uh, Hassani. And once again, still though it's a 12 point game. HFC is not out of it. They just need to figure that out. Yureshani checks back in. Probably to try and get that offensive rebound. That's just a cardinal sin missing a free throw. Misses both and now HFC have it through Shonali Dharmasena. Want to step back and maybe go for the three-pointer. Here's Varnakula. Not a lot going on in front of her. David gets under the basket, but she had no shot there. And this has been bread and butter for the Josephian captain. Just running it up that right-hand line and waiting for Amali. They've not let the ball stay still for a moment, the Josephian yeah. team, and yeah. it's really tested the defensive metal of uh, the Holy Family. Now this reminds me of is um, San Antonio Spurs basketball, sort of like their playing uh, playing style. Yeah, the ball touches all five players before they take a shot, but it has really been effective because they've been they've really broken and taken apart the HFC defense. Nice defensive work. Ilanga Tilaka. No foul that time. David got back and inter intervened. I remember a St. Michael's College Badiklo team passing that he used to play a lot like this. You couldn't tell one player from the other. They were all so similar. And the ball did all the work. The final minute of the game now, and I think it's fair to say that St. Joseph's will take this one home and be the champions of 2018. No joint champs this time. Looks like uh, the team in red will take this home. Yeah, it does seem so, Shanaka. HFC just cannot, they just cannot figure out their defense. They've been giving away a lot of offensive boards. And that in turn have reflected on their offense as well, as the players have tired out. But St. Joseph's Girls School no Gegoda. The same intensity throughout the match, throughout the four quarters. And with their support cast also stepping up as well. Really doing justice to their group stage scores as well. Absolutely, they've thrashed all comers. And this looks like it's going to be a comfortable victory also. For HFC, it looks like they don't quite know which their best five is. Pasindu, with Anne Fernando not being fully fit perhaps. They don't quite know what the balance is that they have to find on the floor. This may be Anne Fernando being off has really messed with the team balance, but this is a final shot again. That's no excuse for, their, uh, for a dismal performance. Certainly not. Well, we say dismal, but they have scored 44 points themselves. Already seen 100 points in the game so far, which has been really good for the crowd gathered here. Just an exhibition of basketball. And the sky hook is good from uh, Nihari. The captain finishing the game strongly in the last 40 seconds. Sandrine's three point effort is way off. Some desperate shooting by HFC. This may be the final position of the game, Shanaka. Yes, the shot clock and game clock, six seconds in between them. Yure Shani. Good, good rebound by uh, Sandrine David. And once again, Amali Am Amanda. 
they are to wreak havoc yeah, in that she's HFC offense. Played that safety role really well. Such good technique, Sandrine, when she shoots the ball, but just hasn't been able to get enough good looks. Another timeout taken by one of the teams, but it's more of a formality right now. It, but a 12 point lead. So, national players on this coaching staff for HFC as well. And it's a massive crowd gathered here today at the Air Force courts, the indoor courts, because we've had to move the game from Royal College out to because of the weather conditions. The rain has cleared up, but we couldn't take a chance here at the Papare of not concluding this already delayed tournament. But what an exhibition of basketball it has been. Over 100 points already in the girls' final. And let's just see if we want to try and finish this off with a bang. Yes, Shanaga, this, uh, this will be the final position of the game. And I'm sure that St. Joseph's Nugegoda will be holding on to the ball. Ten seconds to go in the game. And Ilanga Tilaka takes the shot. It's no good. And David will dribble out the clock. And that's the end of the game. You can hear what this means to the St. Joseph's Nugegoda crowd gathered here around us. What a stunning performance. 58 points to 45. A 13 point victory for the champions of the Papare Basketball Championships for 2018 St. Joseph's Nugegoda. Highlights of the game. Karma Sena knocking down a couple of threes, but not enough. And uh, probably the offensive player of the game, HK Tisari today, Pasindu. Yes, definitely this, HK Tisari played out of her skin. And uh, was one of the main differences between the two teams. Uh, Sandrine David, the captain of HFC, and Serena Varnakula did get some good looks and made a bit of a comeback towards the uh, latter parts of the game but it just wasn't meant to be and it was St. Joseph's day today. Third quarter was probably the most closely contested between the teams but uh, there was just too much of a lead that St. Joseph's had built up. That's uh, Sandrine David, the uh, national cap and captain for HFC but uh, her effort was uh, not enough today on the scoreboard. And St. Joseph's got some key buckets from bench players. Yure Shani, as well as Karin uh, Dailanga Tilaka, really contributing. And Amali Anand really controlled the game today for. In my, my point St. of view, uh, Amali Amanda had uh, an all-round game. Defensive boards, offensive boards, steals, and um, assists as well. Because that's mainly the part of main part of her job description is that she really controlled the tempo, didn't she, from that point guard position? And Tisari once again with a lovely baseline drive. She uh, really looks like she's national potential. Definitely her foot, 
Her footwork especially was immaculate with the Euro steps and the step backs. Good put back there from Hassani, but uh, not enough of offensive or defensive boots from the two big girls at HFC. A lovely little Karim Abdul Jabbar skyhook from the skipper Nihari Umanga. You can see what it means to them. They've worked hard for this championship and uh, they've got the result that they deserve today. Yeah, Shanaga, finally, um, given last year's stalemate at the finals, them being joint champions, I think both teams came here with a point to prove. But the team wanting it the most just came through today. Absolutely. And uh, we look ahead to the boys' final. Maristella versus St. Thomas's College. That's going to be another cracker of a game. We'll join you for that in just a few moments live on the papare.com.